Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the minister, M.L. Kimball, coming to you live tonight. We are going to get into uh, what we left off. Yesterday, we were in Jubilees, I believe. And today, we're going to read some of the stuff that Enoch wrote. Now, first thing before we get into this, I need you to like this video, share this video, and please, 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 please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is free of charge. Never will we ever ask for any type of offering any type of dollars, any type of anything, because in my mind, I think that's a scam. Uh, you should be able to hear the word of the Lord without also feeling like you're obligated to give something in return. So on this channel, on this ministry, uh, KNS Ministries, where we are the followers of Yahushua Hamashiach, we are not going to base anything off of anything somebody gives us. So the word of encouragement that I want to give somebody today, this has been in my spirit since this morning. Now, the Bible says and tells us that, that people in your own family will become your enemy. And so you need to ask yourself, what does that mean? That means people that are the closest to you will sometimes act like they don't even know you. But the advice that I, as a man of God, am going to give you today is that you do not get discouraged. And you have to look at, I was listening to Bishop G. Patterson this morning, and he was talking about when uh, Yahuwah told uh, Abraham to get away from his family in order for him to bless him. That, 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 that is a key point that I want you to pay attention to. Why did Yahuwah tell Abraham to get away from his family? Because his family was into worshiping idols and worshiping other gods and doing things against the word of God. So when we look at that, that is an illustration of today. Don't let people in your family stop your blessing. They, you know, people get jealous. Our friends will be jealous. People that you think are your friends will turn their back on you as soon as something gets rough. So you cannot base your life or your blessings based upon the people in your family. They may not believe what you believe. They may not follow what you follow. But if God puts you on a mission, don't let nobody take you off that mission. I don't care if your husband is against it, your wife is against it, your kids is against it. Let them go to hell. Because the bottom line is this. Everybody will be judged according to what they have done in this life. And unfortunately... These times that they uh, will be reminded to them uh, of when someone tried to yank their coattail and said, hey, get out of that. Try to do this right. Don't live like the other nations. Don't live in fornication. Don't live in adultery. Don't, don't do these things. Do the things that the Lord honors. And, 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 and unfortunately, in the last days, people are going to call wrong, right, and right, wrong. That's why you got so many people getting up and divorcing. Forget, forgetting that the Bible says the only way you're supposed to divorce, a Yahusha said it himself, was if there was infidelity. And then you write a bill of divorcement. But other than that, we've got people today getting married and, oh, I'm not, uh, what is the latest thing, uh, irreconcilable differences. Oh, we're emotionally detached. Well, the Bible doesn't give you an out because you are emotionally detached. You find a way to get emotionally attached because your covenant with God does not change because you feel some type of way today or tomorrow. The reality is we go through things and we suffer through things because we don't understand that when we make a promise or a covenant to God, he expects us to keep our end of the bargain. That is why the children of Israel have, were judged so many times and put into captivity because they could not obey his covenant. They would not 
could, they could not stop going after women of other nations. They went after Canaanite women after he said, don't mix with these other nations. Why? Because they were into worshiping idols and worshiping other gods and worshiping fake dinners and fake. Like I had a conversation with a friend of mine today and he said, you know, you can't have a, you'll never, you don't want to have a Thanksgiving dinner. I said, why does it have to be a Thanksgiving dinner? That's the first thing. This is why it's a scam to me. Because if at the end of the day, you have to wait until once a year to get with people to eat with them, that ain't even real. You might as well quit faking the funk and eat with the people that you live with. Eat with the ones that are in your house. And if you eat with the ones that are in your house, then you don't have to wait till Thanksgiving to get together with your family. So don't give me that. The Bible said don't do things like the other nations. Thanksgiving was never a day that was celebrated amongst the Hebrews, nor the slaves. So the reality is, you are living like the other nations, and you don't have any conviction because you don't study out the Bible and see that God is against that. Now, I'm not trying to rain on your parade and, 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 and step on your Valentine's Day and, 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 and throw mud on your Halloween. And I'm not trying to do that. I don't care. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Are you going to be real or are you going to be a scam? One or the other. Because the Bible said that if you are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. So you don't get to pick and choose. You got to be hot or cold. It's not, I put my left foot in and put my right foot out. It's not teeter-tottering and, and, and playing on one foot on the sand. It's not looking in your backyard, but then looking over the fence at somebody else's backyard. You are meant to be a peculiar people. So with that being said, as being the peculiar people that are connected to Yahusha Hamashiach, he demonstrated how to live a life of holiness. So the reality is, if your preacher ain't telling you to be you holy and is coddling your sin and is not telling you that God is not okay with your adulterous affair, God is not okay with your homosexual lifestyle, God is not okay with your fornication, God is not okay with your lying, conniving tongue, God is not okay with any of these things that are traits of the enemy. So at the end of the day, as a peculiar people, we don't get to live like the other nations. So tonight we're going to get into the prophet Enoch, and we're going to deal with the very first chapter uh, let me give you a backdrop history of Enoch, the prophet Enoch. Let's talk about the prophet Enoch first. Because I never want you to believe or think that I'm, not, I'm going to read you something that I did not make sure is an authentic book of the Bible. So separate out your mind that I am not serving Yahusha Mashiach. Separate out your mind that I'm on some uh, different religion. No. What I did was I read the real Bible and I noticed that there's holes in the stories. And I wanted to fill those holes. I got tired of hearing the same fluff from every single preacher when I asked quest questions. The questions that they could never answer for me was always stuff like, oh, don't ask the Lord about this because you will find out uh, when he meets you. Oh, you're not supposed to ask the Lord. No, how about you don't want to open up your Bible and study to show yourself approved like the Bible says? Because if you did study to show yourself approved, then it's something in your mind should uh, crack and you should in your mind say, if God created Adam and Eve, the first people on this earth, why is the only story that we talk about with Adam and Eve the serpent? 
So you're telling me that there's nothing else that happened with Adam and Eve? That is the scams that I'm sick of. I don't know about you. I'm tired of people filling in what they think something says. No, give me the true answer. Just say you don't know. Don't sit up and tell me some fluff, and then I'll teach that same fluff to my kids. I'm a pretty happy that the Lord has been able to show me what really happened. So when people ask me stuff, I can give them answers of things that they never heard before. Because nobody wants to read it. Well, Minister ML has read it. I've read the book of Enoch several times. So to give you some history on Enoch, Enoch was one of the, he was the Lord's first scribe. The Bible said that Enoch walked with the Lord. Enoch lived to be 365 years old. And then the Lord translated him to heaven. Got to be a good special person. To Could you imagine that if you walked your whole life a holy person, and then God came along and translated you straight to heaven? Well, that's what happened to Enoch. And when Enoch went to heaven, God showed Enoch everything from beginning of time till end of time. Before there was ever a law of Moses, the people obeyed the book of Enoch. Enoch comes before Moses. Enoch comes before Abraham. Enoch comes before Noah. Enoch comes before Genesis. Because if you did any studying, you will find that Genesis is not the first book of the Bible. I know you're going to say I'm crazy. No, you're crazy because you don't want to study out and verify what I'm telling you. Because Genesis was written later, and it is not the first book of the Bible. Although they put it in the first book of your Bible to make you believe that that is the story. You don't get the real beginning of the story unless you read the book of Jubilees. And we read some of that yesterday, so today we're going to read Enoch. Somebody convinced you not to read this book, although the early Christians read it. That is the biggest scam of the decade. So, bear with me. The book of Enoch, chapter number one, starting with verse one, we're just going to read one chapter and then I'm going to sign off today. I do this every day because I get rent requests from you guys saying that you enjoy these messages. And so I'm thankful and grateful because I'm doing what the Lord has asked me to do. Whether I have a building, whether I'm in a pulpit, I don't care about none of that stuff no more. If I'm preaching the message and somebody is hearing me, then I'm doing what the Lord said I need to do. For the Bible says that heaven rejoices over one soul that comes to Christ. So if I'm talking to 15 people and one person turns their life around, and even if they don't come to Christ today, but they say, you know what? I better stop cheating on my husband. I better stop cheating on my wife. I better stop fornicating. I better stop watching pornography. I better stop masturbating. When they start saying these things, then we know that there's conviction. And with the word, the word is supposed to be a sword. It's not supposed to make you feel good. Anytime Moses had to correct the children of Israel, he took them to the word, the law. So there is a law to walk with Christ. You don't get to live how you want to live and think you're still going to heaven. Fornicators, adulterers, liars. And he gives us a whole picture of who will be in the lake of fire. And I got news for you folks that don't think hell is real. I got about 75 scriptures to show you that hell is real. It was a place created for the devil and his angels. It was never meant for men. But what brings you to the place of hell is your lifestyle of sin. Verse number one. The word of the blessing of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the unrighteous and wicked. Enoch, a righteous man who with God answered and spoke while his eyes were open 
and he saw a holy vision in the heavens. This the angels showed me. So this is Enoch getting ready to start telling you about the beginning of time. From them I heard all things and understood what I saw. That which will not take place in this generation. So he's not talking about the generation he was in when this was written. But in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period. On account of the elect. So he's talking about a future generation, folks. He's not talking about what was happening when he wrote this book. So we need to understand that this is future prophecy. When you look at the book of Revelation, you cannot understand Revelation unless you place some of these characters in Revelation. The Bible says in Revelation that there will be two witnesses that will come back before Christ reveals himself. It only tells us about one. It tells us about Elijah. Well, if you read in the books that they removed out, you will find that the other witness will also be Enoch. But yet, they told you not to read his book. On account of the elect, upon their account, I spoke and conversed with him who will go forth from his habitation, the holy, mighty one, the God of the world. I'm saying God, even though it says Elohim, just for you folks, so y'all don't think I'm Jewish or whatever y'all want to call it, whatever y'all try to say, just because I'm taking it a step further and calling it what it really was, doesn't make me wrong. It makes you a babe in Christ. So if it, to make you all happy today, I'm going to use the terms that you guys are familiar with. But the Hebraic Bible is what I'm reading from, the Sefer. And as you see, there's no such thing as God here because I don't know what God you're talking about. Everybody has a God. So when you tell and say God, then who, what, what God are you talking about? A tree God, a sun God, water God, a moon God. Our God, the Most High's name is Yahuwah. And that is why it is pronounced that way in the Sefer. I don't care what your, your, your Amplified says. Your, I don't care what your GNTD says. I don't care what any of those books say. Buy the Sefer for $20 and read what the early Christians read. Don't talk to me about something that they translated and somebody watered it down because of your feelings. I'm not, in about, I'm not about watering down the scripture. If it cuts you, it cuts you. There's been many a times I've sat through being cut because the Bible is meant to cut you. It is not meant to make you feel good about sin. He said, I conversed with him who will go forth from his habitation, the holy mighty one, the Elohim of the world, who will hereafter tread upon Mount Sinai, appear with his host, and be manifested in the strength of his power from heaven. So, folks, he's again talking about the last days. He's not talking about anything besides what's going to happen in the last days. So, again, don't tell me that Enoch is not important to read when he's telling us what's going to happen in the last days. Would you agree that we're in the last days? Then don't tell me that it's not important. Verse 5 says, all shall be afraid and the watchers be terrified. So stop with this glorious day. We're going to be caught up with new grounds and all of this stuff. The Bible says he who endures till the end will be saved. Well, if we're going to be raptured out of here, what the heck do you got to endure? What sense of a, is, it, is, it, is it to be a soldier if you don't never have to use your equipment? Come on, folks. It don't make sense. Show me and find me rapture anywhere in the scripture. It doesn't exist is what they told you. The saints will be here. Everybody will face judgment. Good or bad, we all got to stand for it. So what makes you think you're going to get in some a, a helicopter and fly out of here? If you live in sin, you're going to be judged just like the rest of the goats. Great fear and trembling shall seize them. 
even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled and the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. Could you imagine what he's coming back for judgment with fire? We know that he promised he will not destroy the world again because of Noah. We, he promised that it would not be water. But he did say it would be fire. The earth shall be immersed and all things which are in Paris while judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous. So your righteousness ain't going to save you from judgment. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your preacher is, who your daddy is, who your mama is. None of that will save you from judgment. You will be judged on good and bad. So all the bad things you're doing in your life, he's keeping record. And so there's no running from it. You're going to be judged. He says, and if you look at this, he says the earth shall be immersed. Immersed in what? It ain't water. It's going to be immersed in fire. But to them shall he give peace. He shall guard the elect and towards them exercise clemency. You know what clemency is. If the government, the governor uh, said you can get out of prison early, he signs a document and they let you get out early. Well, he says that he's going to exercise clemency towards the elect. Who are his elect? And the last and final verse says, Then shall all belong to Yahuwah. Be happy and blessed, and the splendor of Yahuwah shall illuminate them. That is all we will get to today in the book of Enoch. Uh, I do enjoy doing this because, again, some of you all don't get any scripture reading at all. Um, uh, you know, at all. And, and, and it's a good thing to know that somebody to cares enough now. to uh, spend some time with you and go through and show you the word of the Lord. Because the reality is this, uh, we have to get back to a place where we take God seriously. And there's so many people today that claim they save and claim they feel, but whoa, how many people on the day of judgment that he will say, depart from me for I never knew you. And so you, when you understand that, that never goes away. I don't care what anybody tells you, what anybody said to you, how you feel. It never goes away. He's not coming back for people that are living in sin. This is why it is very important that you understand uh, that God expects you in return for the blessings that he gives you. Don't tell me I haven't been blessed because if you wake it up every day, you've been blessed. If your kids is all right, you've been blessed. Don't tell me that you haven't been blessed.